We are back with your brand new video, What's Good Heat Nation? In today's video, we're going to be discussing about how the Miami Heat can maximize um, as much as they can in free agency um, and, and during the offseason without having a free agency in an offseason similar to the one that they had in 2020. Uh, because that, that has been a discussion lately over social media and stuff like that. So we're going to be talking about that topic. Um, before we get into it, make sure you guys drop a like, subscribe, and comment down below. We're only 60 subscribers away from 2,000. Let's get to that as soon as possible, man. You guys are the best. Um, and also go check out my second channel if you've not already. I'm going to be dropping a new video there pretty soon. But I've dropped my draft grade video. So if you guys want to see what I gave the heat, go look at that video. It's going to be in my uh, pinned comment. Let's get right into it, though. Um, so the Miami Heat are obviously, you know, um, two days away from having the free agency start. Actually, the whole NBA, not just the Heat, but the Heat, obviously, we're going to be focusing on because that's what the uh, channel is about, the Heat Report. We're going to be talking about how the Heat can maximize their potential during this free agency because a lot of big names that had been linked to the Heat are now no longer linked because they've gone back to their former teams. You know, Kyrie Irving, there's been, there has been so much, or there was so much speculation and rumors about Irving leaving the uh, Brooklyn Nets and not taking the extension um, or the contract that, that was presented on the table. Um, and then there was discussion about, you know, him possibly opting out and going to the Lakers for six million. Um, if he was to opt in, teams like the Heat uh, would make a you know would, would would be a team linked to trading for him. The Heat were on his list. Like so much so much stuff about Kyrie Irving, um, and he was linked to Miami by so many reports. Um, unfortunately for Heat fans who wanted Kyrie, uh, like myself, um, Kyrie Irving has gone back to Brooklyn. He has you know taken his player option. And I'll, I know what you guys are thinking. He can still get traded with his player option, but. I mean, in Shams' tweet, he basically said that Irving wants to play out his years uh, in Brooklyn with Kevin Durant, his, his, the, the rest of his contract. So, um, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't know if, like, that means he's going to stay or leave. But, like, I think that he's not going anywhere for the next season. I think that he's going to be in Brooklyn. I don't think we're going to, you know, try to trade for him uh, this season. I think he's made up his mind of, of being in Brooklyn, at least for this foreseeable season. And then... We'll see what happens in the future, but Kyrie Irving is not off that list. Um, we, can, we can we can scratch him off that list, and that means that Kevin Durant is also off that list, uh, because the only possibility of Durant leaving or requesting a trade was um, if Kyrie Irving was also gone. And now that Kyrie Irving is back, there's really no reason for Kevin Durant to leave. You know what I'm saying? They have Ben Simmons now for a full season. Whatever y'all want to say about Ben Simmons, he's still a good player, and he will help them. Um, so they have a pretty solid team over there, and uh, there's no reason for Durant to leave. So I think he's going to stay. Irving's definitely going to stay after last uh, last night. So we can scratch those two names off the list. Bradley Beal, another name that was heavily linked to the Heat, is apparently uh, signing a four-year max, super max extension. Um, this is from Woj. Apparently, he's likely to sign a four-year, $250 million contract, uh, which is basically the super max. And um, that's going to keep him in Washington for, you know, for the foreseeable future and most likely the rest of his career. Because unless he requests a trade during that timeline, um, four years would probably, I, I don't know how old Bradley Beal is, but I'm guessing he's about 30. So that would make him like 34, um, you know, when, when that contract is expiring. And so he'd be spending like majority of his career in Washington um, after he opted into that extension. So uh, obviously free, agent is, free agency has not yet started, but you know, the, the, um, what is most likely to happen is that Bradley Beal is going to take his bag, take that 250 million and stay in Washington DC for the future. Um, so he can also be crossed off the list because he's another guy who's been linked to Miami a lot. You know, Bleacher Report had it, it seemed like Bleacher Report had his trading for him in like every article, like a lot of people had Bradley Beal, you know, linked to Miami and it's not, it wasn't just one person. Like it was a lot of people because he fits exactly what the heat need as a scorer. So he's another name. That's another one crossed off the list. Um, now you're getting to like the smaller names, you know what I'm saying? Like the Mo Bambas, people like that. There is still one name on the board called Donovan Mitchell, but there, it's been pretty quiet with Donovan Mitchell. I mean, apparently like, I don't know what's going on with the situation. I don't know if the jazz are keeping him. Obviously they want to keep him, but I don't know where his head's at. There was a report from Yahoo sports a couple of weeks ago saying he doesn't want to be there. Um, I don't know if that's true or not. Um, even like. You know, people have been saying that Donovan Mitchell, you know, if he was traded, would want to go to the Heat or the Knicks. Like, I don't know what the case, like the situation is with Donovan Mitchell. I don't know, you know, whether the Jazz are adamant about keeping him no matter what. Um, I don't know what the Rudy Gobert situation is. I for sure thought Rudy Gobert would have been moved by now because on draft night, he had deleted all of his Jazz posts on Instagram. So I thought he would have been gone. Like, 
it's very very quiet around the utah jazz and like rudy gobert donovan mitchell so i mean assuming that donovan mitchell all of a sudden just requests a trade i just don't see him going anywhere i just i think he's going to be with the jazz uh not just next year but also long term as he signed the extension you know what i'm saying so like if there was one season that he would request a trade it would probably be, th be this off season like following all the disappointment over the past you know couple years in the playoffs like like if if there was a time for him to request a trade it would be now uh, and if he's not doing it, then the ship has probably sailed on Donovan Mitchell, unfortunately, because he was like my number one option that I would have loved the Heat for uh, that uh, that I would have loved for the Heat to get. But I mean, it's very quiet around him. So unless he like randomly just starts requesting a trade, I don't I don't see anything happen around Dono. Like I, unfortunately, um, then you get to like the smaller names like the Mo Bambas of the world, the PJ Washingtons of the world, uh, other guys that that have been linked to the Heat. And then you like ask yourself, are any of these guys moving the heat over the needle? And unfortunately for me, the answer is no. I don't think replacing PJ Tucker with Mo Bamba is winning you a championship. So like the heat, I mean, unless something really happens and they have to make something happen, you don't want to strike out like you did in 2020. Lose Jay Crowder, bring in Mo Harkless as a replacement. You, you become worse. Avery Bradley signing does not really work out. He's, he's pretty much injured throughout his whole heat career um hero had like a kind of a sophomore slump like a lot of things went against them in this and the following season after they went to the finals i don't want the same thing to happen in 2022 i mean sorry 2023 so i don't know man like I, i'm i'm not that optimistic you know usually i am one of those optimistic people saying that we'll, we'll find a way and stuff um i think that you know there, it's going to take a lot for like a big fish guy to be available on the market now zach levine also looks like he's going back to chicago that's another name that the Heat could cross off the list right there because he doesn't look like he's going to leave because Chicago is apparently offering him the max and he just wanted the money. He didn't want to leave Chicago. He just wanted the money and there had been some discussions about Chicago not wanting to give him that money and, um, you know, they, they they apparently look like they're going to give him the money. So he's going to probably going to stay in Chicago. Bill's going to stay in Washington. Kyrie's going to stay in Brooklyn. Donovan, unless he requests a trade, looks like he's staying in Utah all these like four big fishes look like they're all staying obviously dame is staying in portland um because he wants to be there he doesn't want to run from the grind as he said it's just very very you know um it's just not the best free agency class it's, it's just apart from those like four names that i just mentioned there's not really any other player out there that's really putting us over the top um so i think the most likely option that that the heat do is running back with the same team those also have some challenges because the guys are getting older, <clears throat> you know, Lowry, Tucker, these guys are getting older. You know what I'm saying? Like they're not, they're not young. Uh, Tucker, like there's a possibility that apparently he goes to the Sixers. Uh, this is from Mark Stein. Apparently like the, if the Tuck, if PJ Tucker went back to the heat, it would be viewed as a su surprise because uh, all signs point towards PJ Tucker and James Harden reuniting in Philly. Uh, that's what Mark Stein said, like word for word, basically. So um, I don't know what the situation is with him, but if he walks, we have to find an actual replacement and not a guy like who's a discounted version. Mo Harkless is not, you know, like I don't want the heat to sweep that under the rug. I don't think they will because they learned from 2020 probably. Uh, but if PJ Tucker leaves, you have to find a, like, a, like a very good replacement. You just you can't just get um, some some minimum player and just call it a day. You know what I'm saying? It could be Jovic. Jovic could be the starting power forward if PJ Tucker walks, uh, but I still think you need a guy with some experience down there as well. Um, there has been some, you know, news about Miles Turner on the block uh, from the with the Pacers. I don't know, you know, what the situation with that is. Same with Malcolm Brogdon. I would like both of those players with the Heat, um, but at the same time, like Malcolm Brogdon, what are you really giving up for him, man? Like, I would, would you? I mean, I, I get people would probably say that they would have Malcolm Brogdon over Kyle Lowry at this point of their careers, but. Um, I just don't think that's moving us over the top either. Um, down in down in San Antonio, DeJounte Murray is a guy that apparently is in a lot of trade talks by the Spurs. I would be all over this if I'm Miami, just because he's not he's not the best fit as far as spacing when you already have Jimmy and Bam, but he's a star and like you need star power. Um, that's what the Heat need. Like they don't need more depth. I think they need just they just they just need a flat out star alongside jimmy and bam like a, a consistent number two or three guy um and then you have a big three and i think that's what the heat need to get like a donovan mitchell obviously not gonna happen but um dejounte murray is like probably the best player on the market right now because the spurs have been actively shopping him 
uh, like this is from a lot of reports i don't think it's false because so many reports have confirmed that the spurs are trying to trade him um atlanta has been like a team that's been really interested in dejounte murray um i think the heat should jump on this I, I really do think i mean you have the young assets if you want to give give back to the spurs um they have you know i don't know if they'll trade jovic because i just don't think it's a good idea to trade jovic right now because he's already been introduced to the fans like the fans are all over him right now he's the hottest thing in miami um he's like the He's, he's just like the best thing since sliced spread that's come out right now because, you know, my, the Miami Heat have advertised him all over the social media pages. The fans are already, you know, you know, watching clips of Nikola Jovic's highlights and stuff like that. And they're already, you know, penciling in where he's going to fit in the, into the rotation. Trading him now, it, it would just be like a big, you know, bullet for, for, the, for the Miami Heat fan base and for Nikola Jovic. Unless it's for like a, a, a superstar, like a KD or someone like that. You probably wouldn't trade Nikola Jovic right now, but you still have some more other young assets um, that you could try to, you know, throw in into into a Dejounte Murray trade. Um, and then, you know, so you do have some guys like, you know, a guy like that's a low key guy that, that the Heat could go out and try to get Kenyon Martin Jr. Because apparently he's requested a trade from the Rockets. Um, I would not be mad at him as a PJ Tucker replacement. I think he plays very hard um, and he's a very promising player. He's not, he's not a bum, man. Kenny Martin Jr. is a very solid player. I, I'm just very surprised that he requested a trade, probably because, you know, they're bringing a, a lot more front court players from this draft, like Jabari Smith and Tari Eason. But, um, you know, I mean, if the Heat, you know, could go out and get him, that would be great. Um, there are options. There are options for the Heat. I don't want to say that there, that there are no options, but as far as like the stars, stars, like the, like the top of the tier, um, you know, cream of the crop, they're starting to, they're, it's starting to diminish. It's, it's starting to waver. Um, and uh yeah i mean we'll see what the heat do in this offseason i just pray that it's not like a 2020 offseason uh but i don't think it's going to happen because i think pat riley will learn from his you know mistakes in 2020 and actually find you know competent players to put in the rotation if guys leave like a tucker or someone like that and even try to go get you know a big fish if he's available or get you know guys even if you're not getting a big fish i would love i would love mo bamba on this team i would love miles turner on this team just guys that can be upgrades you know what i'm saying um so, I mean, yeah, I'm super excited. We'll see what happens. The off season, I think free agency starts in two days. Summer league starts in a week. I'm very, very excited. I will be covering all that on this channel. So stay tuned, man. Um, have a nice day. I'll see you later as always. Peace.